Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. Today I just want to talk to you a little bit about using ferrites. Now there are many different kind of ferrites <clears throat> that you can buy. Um, this case, for example, contains some of these clip-on ferrites that just basically open up and clip around a cable. They're really uh, convenient to use. I do like these and they work just fine. And there are all different sizes. There are some that are quite large and then some that are you know, quite small and you want to buy one that will fit the cable properly. They're also out of different kinds of material. So this particular one is out of a 31 material. And what that does is it has the material and the size affect how well it behaves across frequency. So for in the case of this plot, it shows that the, the maximum performance, the maximum loss of that ferrite is provided somewhere around 100 megahertz. So this would be a good ferrite for something that was around 100 megahertz you were trying to suppress, but not so good if it was, let's say, at 10 megahertz or 1 megahertz. So again, there's many different types of materials, many different sizes of ferrites. Some of them are not clip-on, some of them are like solid rings here like this and you'd slide the cable through them and others come apart and then clip on around the cable. There's even some for, for uh, like ribbon cables for example. These flat ones are, are great for those type of things where a cable might go through there and you're able to suppress the transient. Um, so there's lots to know about ferrites, when they will work, when they won't work. They are actually quite effective at reducing conducted transients or transients that get onto a line and are passed along as conducted. And I'll show you a little demonstration of how they might be used to suppress uh, some high frequency transient. So what I've done is I've set up a little experiment here. I've got a pulse generator uh, that's driving a cable down through a little breakout connection and then over into an oscilloscope. And as you can see on the oscilloscope, it's currently set up for a, for a pulse. There's a sharp pulse that's being generated and it's displayed on the oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate what a ferrite would do and how it is used properly to suppress those transients. And in particular, this might be applied to protect equipment from uh, a nuclear generated EMP. So to start with, let's just record what our, our baseline measurement is. So we've got the, the pulse turned on, just a straight wire with no ferrite in the breakout connection there. And we see a pulse that looks something like that. And it's set for 200 millivolt per division. I count five, almost five divisions. So it's roughly one volt peak. Uh, and this is into a 50 ohm load. So what I'll do next is I'll, I'll clip a single ferrite onto the breakout connection to show you what that might do. These ferrites are the type that you can easily put on and off. They just basically clip on. Uh, so I've clipped it on. Let's see what it did to the signal level. Now I dropped it low enough that it lost its trigger, so let me move the trigger level down here. And you can see now, while the pulse is still there, it's dropped now into about two and a half divisions, which is about 500 millivolts into a 50 ohm load. So it cut it in half. So just the addition of that simple ferrite on that, that breakout cable um, reduced the transient by about 50%, which is great. That could definitely help protect from a conducted pulse. All right, so I return to the original configuration, just a straight cable, no ferrite, and we've got the one volt peak pulse or so on the display. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to show how one way to use ferrites more efficiently is to wrap the cable through the ferrite more than one time. So I have a, a case here where I've created where I've wrapped it through the, the ferrite twice. I've gone through once and then looped it back around. And in theory, that should improve the, uh, the suppression that it provides. So I'll just disconnect this one. And I'll connect this one that has the, the looped ferrite on it. Alright, so 
so it's connected now. And then we'll go up and see what the, the signal looks like. Again, it's dropped enough that it's lost its trigger, so I have to move down. And what you see is that what used to be one volt peak is now on the order of about 200 millivolts. So with one ferrite, we found that it dropped about 500 millivolts. And by just looping the, the cable through it a second time, we were able to drop from 500 down to about 200. And indeed, you can repeat this based on the size of the ferrite. You can put two, three, four, five, whatever number of loops through it uh, and continue to reduce that transient that's seen. So that's an effective way to use your ferrites and get the most bang for your buck. Now, I will say that we could have also put additional ferrites. We could have put both ferrites on the cable, for example. But it's actually, a, uh, you don't get as much benefit from multiple ferrites as you do from the looping. Two ferrites doesn't do quite as well as a ferrite looped twice. So again, hopefully this shows sort of the general technique of using ferrites and how it's used to suppress transient pulses. Now I will point out one thing is that ferrites have very specific frequency ranges in which they work. And so you want to make sure that you select ferrites that are, in the case of an EMP, are very broadband because an EMP is a very broadband spectral event. So it is important to pick the right ferrites and also to pick a ferrite that will fit your cable. It has to be able to fully enclose the cable. If it's a case of a clip-on, make sure that it fully closes around the cable or it's not going to be effective. All right, I hope this was helpful and maybe help you understand how to use ferrites to suppress EMP transients.